Hello everybody, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Harry Wolf, and you are watching The Joy of Coding. On today's installment, we're going to be talking about TypeScript enums versus objects. Which should you use and why? Stay tuned after the break. Breaks over. Uh, so TypeScript has a enum value built in, which is like it is enums are a language feature that exists in most languages outside of JavaScript. Java has them. Other languages have them. I'm missing them off the top of my head. Uh, enums is a way for you to kind of group related values on a namespace. So in TypeScript, they look like this. Uh, we're gonna do colors. We're gonna say blue and green. And what's cool about this is you can kind of console log it just as you would anything other value uh, and say colors.blue. So if I were to run that, I get zero. And the interesting thing here is that enums by default in most languages are index based. Uh, if you actually look at the compiled code here, you can see that it's assigned those indexes there. But there's also string enums, which we're going to be using for the example of this video. So you can do this here. It's complaining here because enums have to either be um, all string enums or not at all. So we're making this all blue and green. If I go back to logs and run this again, I have the value blue. Great. So let's make a function that says show color. And we'll say color is the enum colors. Very nice and handy. It's also a type. And let's just move this console log in here and then just have it console log out the color value itself such that when we call this function, we can do colors.blue, and again, we get blue. That's great. Now, one would think, since we're logging out blue, it'd be fine to also pass in here the string value of blue. You'd be wrong, because in TypeScript's world, the string literal value of blue is different than the enum value that the function argument desires. The function argument desires an enum. We're passing in a string literal. When I say string literal, I mean literally these characters in the string. And they're not compatible. Which means that if you were making a library, right, and then it exported these two things up here, if we wanted to use show color, we'd also have to import the colors enum as well. And like you might want that. You might have an entirely self-contained TypeScript application that you can freely share these enums, but if you're making a library that's being used externally, it might not be the best experience having to import two things just to like use a function. Uh, instead, what I would prefer is to be able to just say, show color blue. But again, we can't do that. So what you can do instead is use the object pattern, one that's been used f since the beginning of JavaScript's time. So we can do const uh, colors, Obj, and we'll say blue and green. So this is great. And what we want really is for this color value to take a union of the values on this colors object. So we'll say type desired args is blue and green. And then we can move this around here. Oops, copy and paste that over there. And now we have TypeScript being happy, still logging blue, which means that I can now pass in the string literal blue, or we can also do colors obj dot blue. Uh, but can we? Uh, why is this yelling at me? Uh, because when I'm passing in this blue value, by, the, by default, when you actually, so let's do this, say type uh, colors obj type equals type of colors obj. So there's an operator in TypeScript where you can get the inferred value of a value in TypeScript and then use it as a type itself. So that's using the type of operator. So when we call the type of operator on that color ob object, this is the type that we're getting back, where blue and green are being typed as just strings, meaning they could be any type of string. Whereas here, we're saying that these strings have to be literally blue or green, which is what we want. We don't want people typing in uh, panda, as a color, although it should probably be a color now that I think about it. Um, we want the actual literal values to have this flexibility to both use 
the object if we wanted to, but then also the strings themselves. So a more recent feature of TypeScript is this as const operator. And what as const does is it says any of the values on this object, this also works for arrays, I'm going to take the actual constant value itself. So now when I hover over here, we can see that blue's value is the actual string blue, green is green. And of course you can see here now, everything is happy because the type of blue is the string blue, not just a string. A little confusing, but hopefully it makes sense. But this, these two are now equivalent. This works, this works. That's cool, but this sucks having to type this over here. Really what I want to do is actually infer this from this object. Luckily, with some magic TypeScript, you can. So let's actually comment this out and copy this over here. Uh, we have things complaining now because it's saying that it's not compatible. I'm not even going to try to read that. So here's some copy and paste fun. So we're going to say type of color objects is the actual object itself. So the type of this is the full object shape. So we're going to start and we're going to say Kia. So this now changes that to just be the keys of the object, blue and green, capitalized. But again, we want the actual values then. So what key of does is actually kind of makes, it makes a union of those values. And what we can do is we can actually uh, take those, that key of expands each one into a union of those values. And then luckily for us, we can actually call colors obj and then type of. So everything's working now. So what, what the hell did I just do? So that, that is the value. So things are working, right? This is working. There's no TypeScript complaints. So we saw before we had, let me, let me go back and, so this is the keys there. When we expand this, we're essentially saying for each key of the object, so blue and green, expand it to each one, and then get the type of them. So for each, we're doing a object lookup essentially with types. So each key is blue and green, and get the type of each one of those. So the key of blue, so the key, this, oh man, this is so hard to explain. Uh, this, oh man, what happened? This expands to blue and green, right? Ugh. So this is gonna be blue and green, right? And then each one is doing a lookup, so you're gonna do a colors obj blue, which is blue, color obj green, which is green. So you now have two of those, you're gonna say, the type of those is the actual strings themselves, which gives us blue and green. So that means that if you wanted to use this in a library, you could export just the function and accept those string values as we were doing before. Or if you wanted to, you could export that object. You can actually just rename this to uh, obj now because we don't actually worry about enums. So we can just say uh, colors, colors, I'm going to say this is a type called colors, so that's all nice and consistent. Like that. So you can export both colors, and you can export the type. And then when you use it in your own library, you have the flexibility of either using an object, which effectively looks like an enum, or just using the string itself. And that's the flexibility. That's, that's where I find this uh, object pattern triumphs over an enum. I think enums were probably great in application, but in the library, not as good. Hopefully that's a little bit of learning for you. Let me know in the comments what you think. Catch you in the next one.